Today we're gonna look at this Askar SQA55. It's a quintuplet Petzval refractor telescope with a focal length of 264 millimeters and an F ratio of F4.8 when it's used wide open. This model sits in the very busy category of compact wide field refractor telescopes, but there's a few things about this one that make it unique. This telescope has some high quality optics. It uses one piece of ED glass and one piece of SD glass. There are five elements in total for a well-corrected flat image field. The most interesting part about this model is its variable aperture, which starts at f4.8 and goes all the way to f22. You can actually use this telescope like a manual lens during the daytime if you want. But without autofocus or image stabilization, you're definitely gonna wanna use a tripod. I could maybe see people using this for creative nightscapes, but to me, this is an astrophotography telescope. And if you are using this telescope slash lens for astro, you're gonna wanna keep it fixed at f4.8. This yields the best star quality and the most amount of light gathering power. You could try stopping it down a notch or two, but beware of introducing star patterns on those precious pinpoints. The SQA55 weighs about five pounds, making it a great choice for anyone using it with a portable star tracker. It even comes with a nice carry case for travel, so I can see this being a good grab and go system for dark sky excursions. Tonight I'll test it on the Star Adventure GTI with a 2600 MC Air attached at the back. This setup will allow me to skip the camera controller, the guide scope, and even the guide camera. For my setup tonight, I'll just have to power the telescope mount and the camera. This rig will have a very limited amount of cables. Because the camera I'm using includes an ASI Air camera controller, I just need to connect the camera to the telescope mount. That's the only actual connection. Believe it or not, with this simple setup, I can run an entire deep sky astrophotography session, including auto guiding, dithering, and plate solving. If you're looking for more of a traditional setup using a guide camera and a guide scope, the SQA55 comes with this pretty slick little handle slash guide scope mount that clicks in and locks. It's very easy to remove it. You don't need to use an Allen key or any bolts to install it or remove it. The same goes for the 200 millimeter Vixen dovetail plate on the bottom. You can remove the dovetail with the hand screw to take the dovetail off and just mount it to a tripod or something like the Star Adventure and then use the hand screw to get it back on for using it with a more traditional telescope mount. Here's where things get interesting, the focuser. It doesn't have a traditional dual speed rack and pinion focuser like the one you'd typically find on a refractor telescope. It uses a manual focus ring like the one you'd find on a manual lens like the Rokinon 135 or the original Redcats. There are two focus adjustment points, a coarse focuser and a fine focuser. The design choice makes sense if you think about people using this telescope slash lens for landscape photography or wildlife photography. I'm just not sure how many people will be using the Askar SQA55 for this purpose. Personally, I don't mind using a manual focus ring like this. You can really dial in your focus and you can get some crazy sharp shots at this focal length. But if you want more control, you can always install an autofocuser. They offer an autofocus kit that you can see here. Now, it is just the kit to adapt another electronic focuser. So it's not an actual autofocuser itself, but it's a kit to use it with other autofocusers. So here you can see it with the EAF and the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube. So that option is there for you autofocusers out there. My favorite simple addition to this package is the threaded filter slot at the rear of the telescope. You can thread in your favorite two inch light pollution filter and be on your way. Because this is a quintuplet Petzval design, backspacing really isn't an issue with this scope. Is it backspacing or back focus? Can we just decide on what to call it? The website states that anywhere between 50 and 60 millimeters is fine and wherever you reach focus is the right spot. I'm just gonna use the regular 55 millimeter spacing that I always use with my astronomy cameras. 
One of the main reasons I wanted to try out the SQA55 was to see if the optical quality was as good as advertised on the Askar website. There are numerous test images shared that show how flat and well corrected the images are. I now know how to check this myself using a tool in PixInsight called the Aberration Inspector. Because I'm using a crop sensor camera, the field of view in this system is pretty forgiving. The website states that the image circle on the Askar is 44 millimeters. So that's just a little bit too small to fully illuminate a full frame sensor. However, using the popular A ASI 2600 MC Air color camera, I should be able to capture a nice flat, evenly illuminated image across the entire sensor. So according to uh, the Astrospheric app, it's pretty smoky out here. The moon looks pretty white. It's not an orange moon, so I also see some fog rolling in. It's gonna be one of those nights, I think, but uh, I'm all set up. I'm on my target on the North America Nebula. Uh, here you can see it as I've got it framed up with the Pelican. Very cool. So that's about the field of view you can expect with uh, crop sensor camera like this ASI 2600 MC. So I've got my guiding calibration going there. I'm about to take my first sub. Uh, why don't I just take a preview image just to show you guys uh, a little test exposure. Do a 10 second image here of the North America Nebula. So the one thing this target does have going for it right now is that it's nearly straight up at the zenith. So uh, I'm not shooting through a lot of atmosphere. Let's see what this looks like here. And I think you'll notice even in this little preview frame through the ASI Air on my phone, uh, how sharp these images look. Really sharp stars. I actually haven't looked at what the uh, image scale is with this system, but I know that it's definitely undersampled. Uh, but that's okay, it's a nice sharp look. So you can see the Cygnus wall in there, very faint. Uh, I, have, of course, have my L Enhance filter in there with that bright moon out. So a nice field of view. Not that you can see much in this, but um, that's kind of just a taste of what I'm gonna get tonight on the North America. So I'm gonna start my imaging plan now and we'll take a look at the data when I get back inside tomorrow. So let's have a look at the data I've collected with this SQA55. This is a single three minute sub exposure on the North America Nebula. So I've just applied an auto stretch here in PixInsight. So at first glance, everything looks really good. Look at those really sharp, tiny stars. Fantastic looking. Now this is a pretty sharp image scale at 2.9 arc seconds per pixel. That's the, you know, the, the design of the, the pixel size of the camera, and then the divided by the focal length of the telescope, 264. So super wide field, super sharp, which is always nice. So the tool I was talking about earlier is in script, image analysis, aberration inspector. And just with the default settings here, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this has the center of the frame and then compares it right next to the very edges of the field. So what you're looking for here is to make sure that those stars still look sharp and round right around the edges. Uh, and they, they look great to me with this APS-C size sensor. So really great results in the single sub. Now let's take a look at my stack of several subs on the North American Nebula. And yeah, so this is out of Deep Sky Stacker. So, uh, you know, the image quality varies a little bit. The skies weren't the greatest, but regardless, we'll check out the uh, Aberration Inspector again of the stacked image, because this is really the image that you're gonna be processing. So Image Analysis, Aberration Inspector, and we'll take a look at this one. Again, looks really good. Those, the stars look nice and sharp and pinpoint. I'll let you decide on, uh, maybe you have more discerning eye for, for this kind of test than I do, but to me, this looks really, really great uh, with this crop sensor camera at 264 millimeters. So no surprises there, no weird stars, 
And this is using the Optolong L Enhance filter. So a pretty mild duo narrowband filter, just for reference. By now, you should have a pretty good idea of what the SQA55 is all about. I'm a huge fan of compact wide field refractors, and this one is very well thought out with some added touches you don't normally see at this price point. Now I can tell you that the SQA55 was impressive optically, but sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Thank you.